Yo, 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 yeah, it's your boy Dr. IBZ, this is the IV Podcast with your boy Dr. IBZ, you already know what to do, what it is, we back at it again, this is episode 5 man, the 5th episode man, you already know how it goes, you already know how it goes, so how is everyone's day going, everyone's week, I hope everyone's being at peace, you know, being happy. I'm just chilling over here, you know, doing my thing. You know, late night vibes as I always do when I record this shit. I like to do it late night because it's usually the time where, like, my thoughts are more, like, concurrent. They're more, like, I don't know if concurrent was the right word. But, like, they're more, like, they're more progressive. They're more, like, thoughtful. They're more mature rather than me going in during the day because during the day you be on that bullshit. You be having a bad day. In the middle of the day, you be on that bullshit, you know what I mean? But once you start to assess the whole day, and you sit down, you go, you know what? I'm going to break shit down a little bit. Okay, I was mad here and there, you know? So I hope everyone is able to sit back, meditate, and look back at what's going on during that day. You know what I mean? What happened during that day? What did you like? What didn't you like? That's what you have to do every day on a daily basis. You know what I mean? Because it's almost like giving yourself self-therapy. Because at the end of the day, the only person that can make yourself happy is you. So you have to figure out ways to make yourself happy. Me, my motto is a juice box and some cartoons and a split. You know what I mean? Or juice as in like something to drink. (laughs) a spliff and like something funny to watch you know what I mean amongst those lines and then I can get into the more deeper shit the darker shit and my mind will be able to to recept it way better because I'm in a positive mind state instead of me being in a negative mind state and looking up negative shit let me be in a negative mind state look up positive shit get to a positive zone and then boom then you look up your true crime shit, you know what I mean? Anyways, happy Valentine's Day to you, motherfuckers. To all you couples, Valentine's Day too, apparently that's a thing. I think it's like a thing where like women meet up and like they they do their thing, which is proper. Um, I think I think men have their own version of that too, but I think it's kind it's kinda I don't know. I think women can get away with that shit, but men, it's kind of like, straight men, it's kind of like, sus a little bit. Like, instead, you should have like, 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 they have their Galentine's Day, the women, and then you have your Galentine's Day, and you guys meet up, type of thing. And then that would be lit, that would be a good time, you know what I mean? But like, women, it's always going to be a good time when they're just chilling by themselves. But men, it's like... For Valentine's Day? I don't know about that. Anyways, um, I'm talking about straight men. I'm not I'm not talking about anything other than that. Everything other than that is like, you know, y'all do your thing. So um I'm gonna get real. I fucking hate this day. And there's like multiple reasons. Like it's like Love your girl no matter what, obviously. Love your girl every day. Treat every day like it's Valentine's Day with your girl, right? Or with your significant other. You know what I mean? But, like, being single for this long and, like, you know, and being strong-minded and knowing what you want and all that shit, you end up being a little bit, not, not even a little bit bitter. Not even just a little bit, like, you're, you're observing shit, you know what I mean? And you're looking at shit. So you're going to have a little bit of a bias when it comes down to, like, Valentine's Day, especially when you're single. So, like, like um, it's like natural hate, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, like, hate that naturally comes. And you got to you gotta learn how to, like, you know, like, block that shit or, like, suppress it or, like, you know what I mean? Move that shit out because at the end of the day... Um, you can't be miserable out here. You gotta be happy. You gotta be happy. You gotta be happy. Even if you're single. Because the only person that can make yourself happy is you. You know what I mean? So, 
I love people being happy. I love seeing all the couples being happy and all that shit. And I love all of that. You know what I mean? I like seeing that. But sometimes you look at some shit, you be like, yo, man, y'all niggas are faking it right now. You know what I mean? Like, so like that type of shit is is the type of shit that makes me go, man, I hate this, I hate this day. Y'all are just, y'all are just faking it. But, you know, I can't really just like go in because I don't really, I'm not really like into their relationship. So I don't really know. You know what I mean? But I know some people flex on the ground and be like, yo, this is my girl, this is my significant other, da 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 And then <clears throat> they try to look good, but whatever. And, like, people are going through it, and, like, and like the people that are miserable during this day, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> people can be like, nah, 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 you don't get no bitches, you don't get no women, you ain't get no niggas, or man, nah, 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 but it's just like, yo, bro, some people just haven't found that person that, that clicks with them, and even if they did, it didn't work out, so now, they're trying to figure out some other shit, because you can't just keep doing the same shit, if you keep doing the same shit, I'm not even going to quote that line because everyone knows that line. But if you keep doing the same shit, it's not going to work out. You have to keep switching it up. Always keep switching it up. But, like, I don't know, man. Like, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of shit going on with, like, in terms of, like, Valentine's Day. Like, my parents, they try their best to, like, like, buy Valentine's Day cards and, like, and like incorporate all that shit because they're teachers so they tried their best to be like yo man um like like integrate yourself within this within like what's going on so my favorite shit was halloween and april fool's day but those are like two holidays that are kind of like you know (laughs) like because I like April Fools because of um, the Andy show. It's Andy, Andy, Andy. That Canadian cartoon show where the niggas just prank niggas. And then um, Halloween. I just love Halloween. I just like the spooky dark shit for some reason. You know what I mean? So, like, that's how it went. But then Valentine's Day, I don't know why. I would always feel the way during Valentine's Day because it would... I don't know. I just feel the way. It's not like... Even if you'd get your Valentine. It's like, I don't know, like, it's just, it's one of those days where it's just like, like, I have to show that I have someone, I have to prove that I, that I love someone, it's just like, I don't know, it's it's just these deep thoughts that keep going on, you know what I mean? And like, that's why I don't understand cheating, because I'm like, if you're gonna cheat on your girl, and then there's Valentine's Day pulling up, like, there's just so much, there's so many things, because like, if Valentine's Day is pulling up and you're cheating on your girl with a side girl, now you just complicated shit. Like, it's just like, there's so many things that it's just like, I don't understand. And I don't understand why niggas cheat. You have a, especially if you have a girl that's riding for you, that's there for you. I do not understand that at all. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why are you cheating if that girl loves you? Because you want some pussy. Now. To me, that makes no sense. It makes no sense. You wanted some pussy. And because you wanted some pussy. And your girl's not willing to fuck. You're going to go fuck another bitch. And now you just fucked up everything. And you're in a good relationship. And I don't get it. I really don't get it. And now the dating scene is so chaotic where it's like, it's like the the, the dumb people are being so loud that, that you don't even know what to do as a single man that just like, you're working, you're going, going, you're going home, you're going grocery shopping, you're living your life, but you're just doing your own thing. You know what I mean? And it gets to a point where like, you don't even know if what you're doing is fucking correct nowadays. Because everything you're doing, you're getting dissed. Every time I go on the timeline, 
oh, if you're short, you're a little boy, if you're Muslim, this and that, if you're black, black men need a da 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 da. So I fit all of those demographics. So when I hear all that shit from these dumbass people, to a certain point, it's going to affect me. So when it affects me, I go, maybe I ain't shit. So then I look at my, my, my mistakes. And honestly, it helped me look at my mistakes. But at the end of the day, like, the way that shit is being pushed is like, yo, why the fuck do black men and black women have this type of beef? Fucking other races, their women and men, they don't talk about it. Us, we are so loud about it. And it pisses me off. It pisses me off. Like, why are we so loud about it? Oh, niggas ain't shit. The, the niggas you fucked with ain't shit. The bitches you fucked with ain't shit. You know what I mean? Other races, they fucked with other people that ain't shit. They don't go, yo, man, you know what? Black men, da da da. Black women, da da da. Come on, man. What's going on, bro? But, anyways, I'm off of that. That, that was the introduction. I'm off of that. We gonna go into the damn what the fuck, 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 fuck. So the baby fucking fought that nigga. That nigga was talking shit. He was like, "Yo, bro, the baby." So here's the backstory: Danny Lay um, and the baby they had a situation, and then um, Danny Lay's brother was like, "Yo, I'm gonna fight you, the baby, when you come to LA." The Super Bowl happened. Fucking Danny Lay's brother pulled up. He's like, yo, what's up? The baby punched this nigga onto the bowling lane, as Joe Budden said. And niggas was slipping and sliding after that. But it makes no sense. Because why would you fucking fight on a bowling lane? You know what I mean? So, like, that's self-explanatory. Like, you're fighting on a bowling lane. And these niggas had no bowling shoes. That's how you know these niggas are uncultured. Get some fucking bowling shoes. Just in case if you're gonna fight. Get bowling shoes, nigga. Get bowling shoes. That's extra grip, nigga. Like, what what are you guys doing? Anyways, I'm off of that. And in terms of damn what the fuck news, Kodak Black, bro. You almost got King Von, bro. You are so fucking lucky. God is with you. And you need to stop being a dumbass. Because Trump pardoned you. You're getting shot at. You're getting shot. You're still alive. And you're still doing ignorant shit. People don't want to be around you. There's a reason why you're depressed. It's because girls don't want to be around that type of energy. As much money as you have. You can fuck as many hoes as you want. Girls don't want to be around that shit 24-7. Fix up your shit, nigga. Anyways... Let's go to the Super Bowl. So the shout out to the LA Rams. They won. Beep, 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 beep. They won. They killed it. They killed it. And um, so Joe Burrows would have won with the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati Bengals? Yeah. If only a fucking bad apple did not come through. A bad apple. When I say, you know, when you know when they say one bad apple can ruin the bunch. That was Eli fucking Apple. This nigga was talking shit, talking shit, talking shit. And that, that fucking, what's his name? Cup, whatever, whatever the fuck his name is. That white boy said, yeah, fuck Black History Month. I'm going to score two touchdowns on you, on you. Like he, fam, I love it when people talk shit and then they get shitted on. I love it. I live for that shit. Because why the fuck do you think that you can just be talking shit, talking and shit, and then feel like nothing's gonna fucking happen to you? Get the fuck out of here. He ate him. He ate him. He ate him like fucking cup noodle soup, nigga. Ate him, nigga. Ate him. Like an apple, nigga. Fuck that, nigga. I'm rooting for that white boy because why the f- Cooper Cup? Yeah, Cooper Cup, nigga. Why the fuck would you talk shit to Cooper Cup when he's killing shit out here? 
And your last name is fucking Apple. His last name is Cup. He put you in a cup and drank you, nigga. No fucking... Um, can you say no homo? How it is? Pause. Whatever. Y'all get what I'm saying. Shout out to the LA Rams. Y'all deserve that. And then OBJ was crying. He got an injury. So I, of course he's going to be crying while he got the ring. But he could have been MVP. But you already know how it goes. And that halftime show was fucking fire. That halftime show gave me fucking chills. So at first... I was watching it and I was so happy because I seen Dr. Dre and Stu Dot doing the thing, right? Then 50 Cent came in, right? I get that nostalgia bug. Because when 50 Cent first came in, I first heard him at my cousin's crib at um, Richmond Hill. And it was 106 in Park. And they're like, yo, this new artist, 50 Cent. And it was boom, 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 boom. And you see Dr. Dre and Eminem writing on the board. And I'm like, yo, what's going on? Because Dr. Dre, like, he's a doctor. Eminem, like, he's his, like, assistant. Like, what's going on? Then you see 50 upside down. Go, go, bro. Bro. If if I was, like, 13 years old, I probably would have... Never mind. I'm not going to say what I said. But that shit gave me a hard on. Pause. Like, I was like, yo... This month, yo, this shit, wow. Who is this guy? And then I heard Wangsta, all this shit. I went to Africa. I told my mom to send me those albums. Said to get Richard Die Trying. She sent me Beg for Mercy. I bumped that whole shit. Wrote down all the lyrics. Memorized all the lyrics. Traded that CD with the Get Richard Die Trying CD. That's how invested I was. I wanted a bulletproof hat, bulletproof socks, bulletproof everything when 50 came out. So I know how it is with that. You know what I mean? And then, fucking Mary J. Blodge. Right? So I was chilling. I was watching it. Because the dancery, that dancery track, I used to listen to that track every morning getting ready for school when I was growing up. So when that track played, I got nostalgia. Me and my mom used to dance to that. And then she did the No More Drama. And I got even more endorphins. I was like, is it endorphins? Whatever that fucking dopamine, whatever that fucking chemical in your brain that you get, I got that too. And I was like, oh shit. I almost teared up. And then Eminem came in with Lose Lose Yourself. Bro, here's one thing. A lot of people like to say Lose Yourself is like a white people anthem. I was going through some shit when Lose Yourself came out. And, and I heard Rabbit Run before Lose Yourself. So my mom sent me Beg for Mercy and 8 Mile instead of the Eminem show and Get Rich or Die Try. So I heard Rabbit Run and then I heard Lose Yourself. Rabbit Run and then Lose Yourself. Those two tracks, oh my God, bro. Those two tracks. And then when I heard Lose Yourself, he performed that. He killed it. He did the kneel. He said, fuck y'all. I thought the two two pop hologram is gonna come out when I heard the ain't manager riff, but then he went into the still Dre and I said Dr. Dre is killing shit out here. Murdered that, and then you already know Kendrick came out being out of the box and he literally showed you guys I'm being out of the box, and like yo the whole show was nice man the whole halftime was amazing I liked it man I liked it. And like it was like kind of like a power reference, because you see Monet and Kane and chilling side by side doing their thing. And then if you look at it, it's like so smart because 50 Cent is basically putting up promotion because that Sunday, Power came out for for Tommy. So you have Monet and you have 50 Cent performing at the Super Bowl. And his episode is coming out that day. That is the best marketing ever. This nigga didn't even have to pay a dime for a Super Bowl. For like the Super Bowl. They paid him to promote his shit. That is amazing. 50 Cent, you are the smartest nigga in the world. I fuck with you for that one. I always been fucking with 50 Cent. I have a culture of towards 50 Cent. Anyways, 
we're going to go towards today's ad. Today's ad is sponsored by Sugar Hill Candies. They're filled with CBD. That means they are good for the joints. If you have sickle cell, all that type of shit. Shaped like hills. And they have the same shit they put in Viagra. So this is good for Valentine's Day. <laughs> You're going to be making love like Marvin Gaye's in the next room recording, and he's still alive. I mean, like, these shits could fix Tyson's back when he said, My back is broke. My back is broken. What happened? Spinal. <laughs> Sugar Hills, we got Purple Hills versions for the aftermath. Peep that fucking reference. Yeah. Sugar fucking hill candies. We sweet up and down. Now back to the motherfucking show. All right, man. So um, this is the twigger, the mm, twigger, the Twitter segment. We're gonna go in on the twigger, tw- twigger, Twitter segment right now. Also, yo, my pin tweet is for by the record. I want niggas to know this shit. Twitter is the only app I can vent on. And if no one reads it, I got it off my chest. LOL. If I become successful and y'all pull up my old tweets, you can suck my dick on record, nigga. I've grown, bitch. Okay? So, that's how we move it. Anyways. Fucking, I tweeted, um... I, I was tweeting, fucking, um... About Eli Apple, I'm like, yo, someone check check Eli Apple. This nigga's still on the grill. He's being cooked, nigga. Cooked. Oh my god, we got a Valentine's Day tweet, guys. We got a Valentine's Day tweet. All right. So this girl goes, wow. A nigga on FD said he took his girl's Valentine's Day gift to her job, but they told him she called off. Y'all be easy out there. This is what I'm talking about. Like, social media, all these options that people have, like whether it's a man or a woman, like, it just made dating shit. If you go to other countries, like, not the, that's not in spot, not like, not really in, in, like, integrated by the Western system, everyone's happy. There are niggas that just chop meat for a living and they have wives and children. There are niggas. That sell stickers. They have wives and children. We live in this society. You gotta make take stickers and make 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 like fuck all that shit, man. Find someone you love. Find someone that that's compatible with you and build something, man. Come on, bro. Look, I hear all y'all complaining. My boy Kareem, shout out to Kareem at underscore K V R I M. I hear y'all complaining about a hundred dudes. On scene, no, I hear all y'all complaining, but got a hundred dudes on scene and unread in your DMs. Let's talk about that. Come on, come on. You have men that are interested in you, that are willing to provide for you, that are willing to strive for you, but you you see social media and you see all these ugly or you see you deem ugly or lesser girls. Getting to the bag And you're like Nah man I need to get to that bag No Deal with what's in front of you first Like I don't understand that man I don't understand that Like everything is just like It is I uh, yeah You guys understand what I'm saying man. Uh, someone tweeted Tariq seeing Kane and Monet performing at halftime and sat Leonardo DiCaprio meme of him snapping at the at the TV with a drink in his hand. Someone tweeted um, thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. We already know who we talking about. Mary J. Blige, you got them thighs. You know what I mean? Them thighs. Mary J. Blige, she killed it. I don't give a fuck what anyone has to say. She killed it. She fucking killed that shit. Anyways, we still on Twitter, you know, we still gonna we still gonna you know look shit up. So what's trending right now? 
let's go see what's trending. Um, Canada has fallen. Oh, I did not see this. Canada's falling. All the emergencies app. So what's the emergency app? Let's look up the article, nigga. Let's go. We got an exclusive. So, as anti-vaccine mandate pro- pro- protesters continue the weeks-long occupation of the nation's capital, PM Justin Trudeau and his cabinet on Monday triggered the emergency act of a decades-old law that gives sweeping powers to the federal government to establish order during the crisis. The law, which has never been invoked. Oh, shit. He's using his daddy's powers. Gives the federal government substantial substantial, short-term powers to deal with the crisis. So what is it? What's the emergency act? The act grants cabinet Trudeau and his ministers the ability to take special temporary measures that may not appropriate in normal times. Wait. Hold on. Read that text. Take special temporary measures that may not appropriate in normal times. That means they can abuse you. Normal times. It's 2022. We already know how sensitive shit. Oh, that's why they got rid of the GoFundMe and all that shit. Oh, I see y'all. To cope with an emergency and the resulting fallout during urgent and critical situation. The law itself defines an emergency as something that seriously endangers the lives, health, or safety of Canadians. But y'all are doing it. You know what? I'm not going to go in, but y'all are doing it. The government is doing it. Y'all fucked with our mental health. Now we're at your door and now y'all saying y'all, now we're fucking with other people when everyone else kind of agrees with it. The only people that don't agree with this shit are the old ass Canadians because they just want to fucking die in peace. While the government, anyways, back to the article, while the federal government still has to respect the terms of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, the law gives the federal government a lot of leeway for action. For one thing, it gives the federal cabinet unprecedented power to assume jurisdiction from the provinces and municipalities. The act has been called the most powerful federal law by some experts because it essentially allows the federal government to take matters into its own hands and temporarily supersede other laws that may already be on the books. I just called that. The act was passed in 1988. As a replacement of the War Measures Act, has never been used before because it's widely considered a measure of last resort. Hold on, bro. 1988. Trudeau's dad signed that shit around that time. And, Trude- and Trudeau's son is now using that. You motherfucker. As a last resort? As a last resort? Yo, Trudeau, you're... Yo, Trudeau, I yo, I love you, Trudeau. I love you, Trudeau. The War Measures Act was deployed during the First and Second World Wars and most controversially during the 1970 October crisis in Quebec. Before invoking these powers, the federal government must determine the emergency exceeds the capital or authority of a province to deal with it or that the situation seriously threatens the sovereignty of security terri- territorial integrity of Canada. So, I see it. Wow. I see it. I fucking see it. I see it, man. Chido, yeah, protect yourself, Chido, man. Keep protecting yourself. Because we see what's happening, right? You're going to use the same laws that your dad put in so you can protect yourself. I see what's happening. But, you know what? No one's going to really call it out like that. And at the same time, this is satire. This is all jokes. I love Trudeau. I love Canada. You already know what it is. This is satire. But, I fucking see you. I see y'all niggas, man. I see y'all niggas. But... At the end of the day, who am I? Who am I? I know, I know government. Fucking political type of nigga, man. I ain't shit. 
I'm just doing my thing, podcasting. But sometimes, you know, you have thoughts. Sometimes your thoughts penetrate your brain and they make you go, oh, is this what's, oh, never mind. You know what? I'm going to shut the fuck up. And that's what I'm doing. I am shutting the fuck up. And if you know, you know. And what's understood ain't got to be said. Ain't got to be said. Anyways, man. If you guys have any topics, concerns, comments, anything that you guys want me to indulge in, let me know. I got a Discord that I'm going to put up. So um, just let me know anything that you guys want to talk about. This is your boy, Dr. IBZ. This is the IB Podcast with your boy, Dr. IBZ. Stay tuned, stay blessed, and stay safe, nigga. Peace. And I'm out. And also, happy Black History Month and happy Valentine's Day to all of y'all. To all my nurses and all my veterans and all my people going in there. You already know it's the doctor signing out. Peace.